this is Ambie from Board Game Blitz, and today I'm gonna to share with you my four-year-old's top 10 favorite board games of all time. I have four-year-old twins, and one of them likes board games more than the other, so at the time of ranking the games, he had played 62 different games, and so I figured he could probably rank and do a top 50. So first I asked him if he was interested, and he said yes, and so I printed out cards of every single game he'd played, plus some more, and did a sort of manual Pub Meeple ranking. So when I do my top 100 list, I use Pub Meeple, the website, where you can put in a list of games and then it shows you compared two games and you pick one that's better. And then you just basically keep doing that and it ranks all the games based on that. So I did this manually with my child because I figured he would understand like the card thing better than looking at a computer screen. So at the time of ranking, he had played 62 games and he ordered all 62 of them, plus a couple extra that he hadn't actually played. But I will share with you his top 10 games. And if you wanna see the whole list, I'll have that linked below. Also, these rankings are just according to him picking them. And I don't know if he knows what it means to like something better than the other, but I think a lot of his list is, is fine, but some of them I don't think he actually likes them that much. Anyway, number 10 is Here Fishy Fishy, which is a game in Mama's My Very First Games line for two-year-olds. It's a magnetic fishing game and it's got really cool components, so I think that's why he likes it. Number nine is Disney It's a Small World game. This is a matching game that has a cool 3D board and my kid loves 3D stuff and I think that's gonna show up in his list a lot, but it kind of mimics the ride. There's lots of pictures and you're trying to match picture cards to the pictures on the 3D board. Number eight is On a Mission. This is a speed game that he likes because you're raccoon thieves and he likes stealing the treasure. There's a pile of cards that each have different colors and different numbers of treasures on there and you roll a die with a color and that color is what you're going for. So you're going to try to go for the card of that color that has the most treasures. My kids played this together and it was great seeing them like try to go. They got all frantic because they knew they were trying to go fast. I have to give them a big handicap when I play, but my kid is getting a lot better at it and he really likes stealing the treasure. Number seven is Exit the Game Kids Jungle of Riddles. This one I'm not sure why it's on the list because he doesn't actually play it much. He played it like once and I don't know what he liked about it. I talked about this in my Escape Rooms for Kids video. It's kind of an escape room, but it's just like a bunch of different puzzles of finding animals and stuff. Maybe he likes that there's a treasure chest here because my kid is into theme and he likes pirates and treasure chests. So I think that is probably why he likes this, but he hasn't actually played this game that much. Number six is Disney Mickey and the Beanstalk, which I have an overview video and a playthrough video <laughs> where he played through the game. So he does like this one a lot. This has another 3D structure where you're working together to steal back the food and the heart from the giant from the Mickey and the Beanstalk show. There's a 3D beanstalk though, like the castle and the clouds and the beanstalk that goes down. And so you can put your little character on the beanstalk and it slides down. And so that part is really fun. And then also there's like you spin, you move around and picking up things, but my kid really likes the beanstalk. <laughs> Number five is Korra Quest, which is a dungeon crawling game. It's for a little older kids. My kids have not played a full game of this yet, but we've played, I think, a partial scenario, maybe a quarter or a half of a scenario. This was designed by a kid, Cora Hughes, and her dad, Dan Hughes. I do know Dan Hughes, so this is not unbiased, but my kid doesn't know him, so I guess it is unbiased. But anyways, this is a dungeon crawler made for kids by kids, and all the art is by kids too. My kid has also made his own art for the game. He made a little standee with a skeleton. So he likes skeletons. There's a skeleton on the box, so he likes that. He also likes defeating baddies and stuff, so when we played the game, he liked rolling the dice and defeating the baddies and going for the treasure. I think it's the only dungeon crawl game they've played, and so like my kid is into that theme, and he likes just playing around with the pieces too, because it's got a lot of cool standees with different monsters and cool looking things, because it's all art by kids, so he likes all that art. Number four is Monster Chase, which we got as a review copy. This is a cooperative memory game. You're trying to flip over tiles that match the toy of the monster to scare the monster away. But what my kid likes about it is you get to scare the monster away. You say, get back in the closet. And there's a 3D closet thing. The box has like a pop out closet doors that you open up and you put the monster card back in. So he really likes the pop out doors. Number three is Nightmare Before Christmas, Merry Madness, which I got as a review copy, but my kid kind of took it over because he really likes Nightmare Before Christmas. And so he played with this a lot without like playing by the actual rules, but the actual rules is it's a speed game where you're trying to get rid of all of your tokens. You roll dice and they tell you which token, how many, and which direction you pass it. And you're just like frantically passing it. My kid has not played with the speed version yet, but he did play like a turn-based house ruled version where he's practicing his left and right and counting the tokens 
seconds. Most of the time he just plays with the pieces and we still have the punch board for the game because he didn't want to throw it away. And so he like puts the tokens back in the punch board. He like makes a little structure out of the punch board, makes his own game with it. So he really likes the components because they're all Nightmare Before Christmas things. And he loves that. Number two is Disney Return of the Headless Horseman game, which is a cooperative game themed around the Return of the Headless Horseman. <laughs> so in this game, players are working together as Ichabod trying to get away from the Headless Horseman. And so there's a trail that you're moving along and you're trying to get to the end before the Headless Horseman catches up to you. The Headless Horseman can catch up to you and you get turned over fear tiles. And if you have too many of those turned over, then you lose. The way you move is you each have a hand of cards that has numbers on them and you play it down simultaneously and you're trying to match. If any of the cards match, then you move that many spaces. So you're kind of trying to think of what your teammates are gonna play so that you can move correctly. And there are different spaces on the board that do bad things or do good things, like you can get land on a shortcut space. And so you're trying to like work together mentally to land on that space. So my kid usually just plays the card randomly, but he does do the counting for moving the spaces and he likes moving the Headless Horseman because he really likes the Headless Horseman. There's also a tree that spins around and like acts as a spinner to show how many cards you draw, but also when Ichabod lands on a space, you can put him on the tree and he spins and then like that's where he ends up. So that tree is fun to play around with, but I think my kid really likes the theme because he likes the Headless Horseman. He always wants to be the Headless Horseman, even though we're not supposed to be that in the game. We're working against the Headless Horseman. Finally, my four-year-old's number one favorite game of all time is Skulls of Sedlik, which is a two to three player card game. It's for ages 8 plus, so he's not really the target audience for this, but it has skulls in it, and he loves skulls. So my kid is very into theme. This is a puzzly card game. It has 18 cards and that's it. There's skulls on each card, two skulls, and there's different types of skulls. You're gonna be making a pyramid or a triangle of your own cards and trying to score them based on how each different skull scores, like matching them together or like having some on top of others. And on your turn, you can take a card from the middle or place the card down. So you're like seeing what other people want and you, you have to take a card before they get that card, stuff like that. My kid doesn't get the strategy at all yet, but he is able to place cards down and follow rules for placement. He just loves the skull cards. But yeah, when I was doing the ranking with him, he consistently put Skulls of Sedlec -like above the other games. And so that's his favorite game of all time. All right, so obviously that was a very subjective list based on my specific four-year-old's interests because he's very into theme. I think a lot of kids probably are into theme and they will like games where the theme speaks to them. So for my kid, that's games with skeletons, pirates, treasure, things like that. And for other kids, it'll be something else. And also it doesn't have to be a children's game for your child to enjoy playing with it. So hopefully you enjoyed this list and it might give you some ideas for playing games with your kids. But if your kids do have favorite games, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see the full ranking of all top 62 games of my four-year-old, then check that out in the comments below as well. I also have some video overviews of some of the children's games that I talked about if you want to know more about them. But thanks for watching Board Game Blitz. Bye.